Thanks for watching CMTV. We know you'll be blessed by this week's message. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Visit cmjacksboro.com for more information about our church and ways you can get involved. Thanks for joining us and welcome home. But I want to pray over myself before we get started because um, I want you to see Jesus and not Sadie. That's, right. That's very important to me. Yes. So Lord Jesus, I come before you. Holy Spirit, my Father, I ask you to take over that my words are your words. And I just ask you to prepare each and every heart to hear the word of the Lord. And I thank you that you've done it. And I thank you, Father, that the angels are here to minister. The angels are here to carry stuff out. But most of all, your presence. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for being here. Um, will you put the scales of justice up, please? I didn't know what to title this other than the words of Jesus or God's word because mostly I'm going to be reading to you red letter. But this is the image that y'all have seen me talk about in the scroll that was unrolled before me in a dream of the scales of justice, the shofars, and that ancient money. Well, I wanted you to see this because I'm telling you right now, justice and judgment has begun. And you are the body of Christ, and it begins with you and me first. You will see the wicked fall in this world. You will see it in the governments, but you will see it in the church, and it's already begun to happen. But you and I, as individuals, must allow God to judge us. Yes. And that's not fun to look at. But we've got to look at ourselves because he will have a pure bride. He will, regardless of you. So you need to set your heart to receive the word of the Lord. Um... The song that we were just talking about, I wrote down some of those words because correction. You know, we just did a declaration that that correction is good for us. God chastens those whom he loves. Are you whom the Lord loves? Yes. 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 Now, let these words ring in your ears before I get into this. There is no why that he won't tear down, and there is no wall he won't kick down coming after you. I'm telling you today, the words I'm going to share is he's doing that. He's coming after you. That's right. Because your soul and your future in God depend on it. Yes. It depends on it. I'm going to go to Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. Now the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of your soul and your spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of your heart. See, you think with your heart. A man is as he thinks in his heart. Your brain's just a computer, but you think with your heart, and you speak with your heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things that are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. You and I are accountable for ourselves. Yes. Our actions, our words what we do with our life, and how we treat others. You are accountable, and I'm telling you, there's words you're going to hear today. You are accountable, because you're going to hear the word, and you will be accountable for it. That's, right. that's the word of God. All right, let's go to Matthew 5.17. Now, Jesus, I want to talk about the law here, because Jesus came to fulfill the law. He didn't come to do away with it, and this is his words. He said, do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. And here with our greasy grace, oh, that's Old Testament. We're under the grace. And you want to do away with the law? What did Jesus just say? I did not come to do away with it but to fulfill it. For assuredly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle by no means will pass from the law. Till it is fulfilled. That's right. This is the words of your Messiah. Amen. You need to listen. That's right. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. We have pastors and teachers teaching heresy. We have compromised, we have put up with, and allowed homosexuality in our country and in the church. 
We've let them be pastors and teachers. We've allowed people to live with one another and not correct them. The Word of God is very strict about these things. Very strict. And we just don't listen because we want to do what we want to do and think we're still going to get to heaven. It's wrong. It's wrong. Pull up the Ten Commandments. I'm going to go to Exodus 20 and we're going to look at it. Now let's look at the Ten Commandments. God came down in a supernatural, terrifying way and showed himself to the people, wrote these himself, but we don't listen and we don't obey them because we want our greasy grace. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. It did his, you know what? We came out of the land of Egypt by the blood of Jesus. Did we not? Yes. Did he not cover us? Bring us out. You shall not make yourself to carve an image. Well, first of all, uh, you should have no other gods before me. We have gods before him. We have gods of sports. We have gods of TV. We have, well, the worst is God of self. What I want, how I feel, what I think. You're your own God. You better get out of the way. You better stop teaching your children that sports are, are their God. Our country's bad about it. It's okay to enjoy those things, but you can't let it be first. You should not make any carved images, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water. You know, don't make up idols. We have idols. What's all over your, your um, children's walls? Football players? Think about it. That's an image. What are you looking at? He says that he'll um, fry the Lord and my jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation. This is scary. This is a very scary thing. You should not take the Lord your God's name in vain. How many of you go around saying GD this, GD that, F this, F that? Those things shouldn't be coming out of your mouth. He says he'll not hold you guiltless who takes his name in vain. It's a scary thing to fall in the hands of the Lord. Remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. Do we really? Is it precious to you? Is it precious to you? Honor your father and mother. You know, there's a promise with that one. Honor your father and mother. And long life I will satisfy you with. Children, honor your father and mother. Adult children, honor your father and mothers. He'll bless you with long life. You should not kill. Oh, but we do. We kill with our mouth. We kill each other with our mouth. You should not commit adultery. How much infidelity do we have in the church and marriages? If you've done it, you better come clean. Not only before the Lord your God, but you need to come clean with your spouse. You've got to come clean. Thou shalt not steal. That just speaks for itself, doesn't it? Thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. How many of you repeat gossip, mumble, murmur, and complain? Bearing false witness. You don't have the facts. You don't know the truth. And shall not covet. And it goes on in here, not to covet your neighbor's wife, not to covet your neighbor's things. Not to covet those things. God will give you what you need. Right. Seeking first the kingdom of God, and he'll, he'll give you all these things. That's, right. That's what he says. So we need to learn the Ten Commandments, and we need to hide the word of God in our hearts. So we'll not sin against God. It's so in you that you don't want to offend the Lord, much less offend your own self. Or wound the people you're supposed to love. Will you um, show the image of... Um, I'm going to go to Revelations 1 now and start reading. I want you to see this vision that John had. I couldn't find an image that I liked enough because... This is Jesus who appeared to John. With the sword coming out of his mouth. The stars 
in his hand and the candlesticks. I'm going to read this to you. So the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to his servant, things that must and shortly take place, and he sent and signified it, his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word. And he had this amazing uh, vision of Jesus like this. But then Jesus begins to address the seven churches. But see, the stars are the angels over the churches, and the candlesticks are the churches. So the stars are the angels over the seven churches, and the candlesticks are the seven churches. And um, see, you and I are the church, are we not? Have we not taught that we is the church? Yes. So you have a candlestick, not just congregations have, have a candlestick, but that candlestick can be removed. It can be removed. And I don't think you want it removed. I was in the spirit on the day, and I heard behind me in a loud voice of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches, which are in Asia, America, Ephesus, Israel, Samaria, Egypt. You get the picture? And he starts listing all these. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a garment down to his feet, girded about his chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool. I want you to, that's not a very good image, but I want you to imagine this scene and this presence of Jesus appearing to him. Hair white like wool and as white as snow and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine grasses as if refined in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand the seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as if dead. I think I would too. I think I would too. And he laid his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. And then he explains to him that, he, you know, he's Jesus. He said, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And then he explains to him also that I have the keys of Hades and death. And then he tells him that the seven stars are the angels over the churches and the lampstands are the churches. Now we're going to talk about the loveless church. And I want you to examine your own heart. We already established we are the church. So you need, these are not condemning words. It's the Lord running after you right. to cleanse you, to purify you, to make you his bride. So it's all about humility. Are you going to humble yourself and hear the words of Jesus? Are you going to keep doing what you're doing? Amen. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil and who have tested those who say they are apostles and are not. Some of you don't have a clue what that's saying. Because you haven't tested. And you're bearing evil instead of not bearing evil. And have found them liars. And you have persevered and had patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. So as I'm going through these churches, I want you to examine your own heart. Where am I in this? And what would Jesus say to me? Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. You've left me. You've left me. Remember, therefore, where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. I told you your lampstand could be removed. That's not funny. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. The deeds of the Nicol... I can't even say the word. Are what we see everywhere. They're trying to compromise the word of God, the world, and wickedness. And smashing it all together. Witchcraft? It's not tolerated. You should hate it. You should hate all evil. 
He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. The next one, the persecuted church. And to the angel of the church of Smyrna write, These, uh, uh, these things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your works. Tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. We have people in the body of Christ who say they are Christians, Jews, but they are not. They are of the synagogue of Satan. And you need to discern the difference. Do not fear any of those things which, are about to, uh, which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested and that you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Hold fast to the Lord your God. Hold fast to the Word. The compromising church. I think this is flat out in our faces. And the angel of the uh, uh, church, uh, Peter, Sorry, Pergamos, right? These things says he who has a sharp two-edged sword. Did we not establish the sharp two-edged sword at the beginning? Yes. Piercing between soul and spirit and bone and marrow? God's word is sharp and it should cut you to the quick. Especially when he loves you so much and wants so much good for you. You need to hear the words of Jesus. I know your works and where you dwell. Where Satan's throne is. And you hold fast to my name and did not deny my deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas, my faithful martyr, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you, because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam and taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. It's rampant. We have abortion that's rampant, and we have taught and allowed and tolerated sexual immorality in God's body. Have you done it in your own body? You need to look at this personally. Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Again, there's that word, which thing I hate. He hates it. It's destroying you and you don't even know it. Repent or else I will come to you quickly. We'll fight against them with the sword of my mouth. I told you it's a terrible thing to fall in the hands of the Lord. The dead church. And the angel of the church of Sardis write, these things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Did you ever think about that? God has seven spirits. Spirit of wisdom. And it goes on and on and on. There's seven spirits that our God operates out of. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Before I read any further, I'm going to share with you a dream that the Lord gave me several years ago. In this dream, I was walking in this old house, and as I was walking down the hall and went to turn down this hall, it was like someone was showing us the house. It was all sealed up, and I stopped, and I said, what's behind that wall? And they said, nothing. And I said, no, there's something behind the wall. And so we... We tore the wall open, and sure enough, there were stairs that went down. And when I walked down in that room, there were different chambers or different rooms, and it was obvious that all kinds of sexual immorality, torture, child sacrificing, all this, all this evil stuff had gone on in the room. And as I kept walking around the room, all of a sudden, um, people started appearing. And I looked at them, and I'm like, don't you know you're dead? Whoosh. They disappeared. And it got more and more. There were music groups. There were individuals. There, I mean, just the room just kept getting filled up. And I was telling them, don't you know you're dead? Well, then some of them didn't just disappear. They, they kind of listened. And I could tell that Satan was coming in his pawns. And I knew that the Lord wanted them to get out. And I said, listen, the enemy is coming. You need to go with me right now. Right now, you need to go with me. We need to get out. And some of them just still stood there. But then others did. 
and no sooner did we get out, the door slammed and the flames engulfed them. You need to listen. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that they are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. You need to let these things die in you. You need to get rid of them. Remember, therefore, now you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief. And you will not know what hour I will come upon you. This is Jesus talking, y'all. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. We're going to talk more about the garments here in just a second. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I'm going to read that to you again. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is Jesus talking. It is possible for your name to be blotted out. So once they've always saved there's a lie, it's a shaka, which is a lying pen of the scribes. It's the liars. It's not true. You must hold fast. How do you keep your garments clean? Your garment. Show them the garments. We have been washed clean in the blood of the Lamb. When you got saved and you received Jesus, He washed you clean. But these things of the world have crept in. They damage your soul. They damage your spirit. You damage your garment. And you must walk away from it. You must stay in the blood of Jesus. Cleanse. You must walk wholeheartedly if the Lord your God. He will cleanse you. He will cleanse you. This is what He's doing today. He wants to cleanse you and keep your garments clean. But it's your choice. It is your choice. These are not my words. This is, I'm reading what Jesus said. You can't lose your salvation. You left it. You left it. We're the bride of Christ. So you've cheated on your bridegroom and defiled your garments. What do you watch on TV? What are you feeding your soul? That's a good word, y'all. It's good stuff. It is good. It's the goodness of God that grants us repentance. That's right. I don't know about you, but I want to be a pure bride. Me too. I want my heart clean before God. Shut my mouth, Holy Spirit. Like David said, put a guard over my mouth. I want to speak life over myself. I want to speak life over others. Now it's called the faithful church. This is the only church he doesn't have anything against. And the angel, and to the angel... Of Philadelphia, right? These things says he who is holy, who is true, and who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts. You know what? There are doors in the Spirit that he can open for you and I, and it is the most amazing thing when you can see. It is the most amazing thing when he opens those doors and you walk in and he, revelation falls all over you. And you see dreams and you see vision and you can see what the Father is saying and doing. And you're just overcome by Him. You're undone. And all you can do is weep because of His goodness. These are some of those doors. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. And no one can shut it. He opens those doors where you can go in. That veil was torn. You can go in. We don't have to wait till heaven to see heaven. Think about that one. Amen. If it's going to be on earth as it is in heaven, these are the doors we need to walk through, we need to see. For you have a little strength and have kept my word and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan... Listen, this is great. This is great for the faithful church. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet to know that I have loved you. Woo! I want to be faithful. How about y'all? Yes. Yes. Glory, that's exciting. Because you have kept my command to persevere 
and also, I also will keep you from the hour of trial. That's a great one right there. Which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, that no one may take your crown. You better cling to the Lord your God. Cling to him as never before. Run after him. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You know, when we were in Israel the first time, I saw that city. I saw a vision of the city. I ran up the temple steps and I turned around and I overlooked Jerusalem and I had a vision of the golden city of the new Jerusalem coming out of heaven. I'm going to be right there. That's my reality. I'm not missing it. Now the lukewarm church. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans right? These things, says the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you're neither cold or hot. You've all, if you've been around in the church world at all, you, you've heard this. But you really better examine yourself. I wish that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. I'll spew you out. I'll vomit you out. You know, you can be working for the Lord. Signs and wonders and miracles can be coming out, you know, following you. Because the gifts are, are irrevocable. But you can still not know the Lord. Because you say, I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. And do not know that, you don't even know that you're wretched. You're miserable, you're poor, you're blind, and you're naked. Darn. <laughs> you know, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire. Let him refine you. Let him refine you. It's okay. The chasing of the Lord is good. Just humble yourself, you know. Why don't you tell that stinking spirit of pride to get off your back that sure. you've had it because it's destroying your life. It's destroying your relationships. It all boils down to humility. Humility. Humble yourself before the Lord. Because your pride is the same as Satan's pride, pride that threw him out of heaven. I counsel you to buy that refined gold from me, that you may be rich, really rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. Man, just let me cover you with my love. Let me cover you with my blood. You don't have to be ashamed. You keep hiding. You keep defiling your garments. Yeah, then you are. And anoint your eyes with, the, with eye salve that you may see. Lord, grant the people. Open the eyes of their understanding that they can see. As many as I love. Here it is. I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. He's knocking at the door of your heart right now. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Amen. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. Oh my gosh. You know what? To go up and sit with him on the throne? Woo! How awesome is that? Just the, the vision of it. And I, uh, as I also overcame, just like him, we can overcome and sat down with my father on his throne. Oh, that's awful. Awesome, awesome, awesome. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You know, that's not, that's not a lot of fun to hear those words. It's not. But do you understand what your garment is now? And that you, how we defile our garment? You are the temple of the Lord. You house him your spirit and your soul, and you house the Lord inside you, and you've defiled yourselves. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6, 17. Here's some more words of instruction. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. 
See, we're supposed to be one with the Lord. And here's commands. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? You know, years ago, I, um, I was talking to somebody that was committing fornication, and they knew the Lord, and I told them, I said, you know, w- would you take your girlfriend um, into the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem and have sex with her? His face got really big. Eyes got really big. And I said, well, that's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. But not fun to think about that, is it? But it's the truth. Now I'm going to go to Matthew 7, 21. These are more words of Jesus, y'all. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and have done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. How many of you have seen big-name preachers fall because they were practicing lawlessness? They got exposed. Get ready. You're fixing to see a lot more of it. And you're going to see it in individuals, unless they repent. He's always just to forgive us if we repent. And he said we wouldn't be put to shame if we would. Amen. <laughs> Stop hiding. That's right. Therefore, who hears the sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Are you foolish or are you wise? Now we're going to go to Matthew 22. This is Jesus at the wedding feast. And he's talking about the kingdom of heaven again. The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. And he, he sent his servants and called them and invited them to the wedding feast that they were willing to come. Well, again, he sent others out and said they're not willing to come. The body of Christ is not willing to come. They're not willing to get their garments cleaned. They're not willing. Again, he sent them out saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen are fatted calf. I've killed someone a party, you know. He's just, come on, come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their way. You know, went to his farm, went to his business. You know, no big deal. The Lord's calling me. Who cares? Basically, that's the attitude. I'm going to do what I want to do. And the rest... Uh, and then he, then they got persecuted. He sent these out to say, come on, come on. And then they got persecuted. And he, uh, they seized the servants. They treated them spitefully and killed them. And when the king heard about it, he was furious. And he sent out uh, his armies and destroyed those murders and burned up their city. Wow. I think we need to start repenting. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready. So he sends them out. And you know the story that they go and and they get them on the highways and the byways. See, there's a great harvest of people with souls out there that are ready and willing and waiting to see the power of God. They just need to know he's real. And we haven't demonstrated that, but we're going to. We're going to demonstrate the love of the Lord. And they're going to be so hungry for Him. And see, I'm going to tell you something. God has, is flipping things on the enemy. He's flipping everything on the enemy. You know, He's trying to pull God out of our schools, um, just flaunting all this crap in our faces. But God's going to flip it. Because when you tell people they can't have something, they want it all the more. So when you tell people they can't have God, watch out. He's going to give Himself to them. He's going to flip it. Get ready. We've got to get purified. We've got to be ready to help these people. Yes. Come to the Lord. Yes. Help train them in the ways of the Lord. But we need to get on fire for God ourselves. Amen. Who wants a powerless God? We have the most powerful, amazing God there is. 
the one and only, but we haven't demonstrated it. We don't look any different than anybody else. Let's go to Matthew 25. Now, this is a parable of the foolish virgins and the wise virgins. Then the kingdom of heaven should be likened to the ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now, you've got to imagine yourself as one of these ten virgins. Now, five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Are you a foolish um, virgin? Do you feast? Do you feast on the Word of God? Do you know the Word of God? Because if you don't know the Word of God or feast on His Word, then you don't know God. Jesus is the Word. Amen. You don't know Him. You need to fill your lamps. You need to fill yourself up with the oil of the Word of God. You need to fill yourself up. But the wise took their oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamp. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Now look what the wise one said to them. No, at least there should not be enough for us and you. i am tell you right now, I'm not sharing my oil. I want to be ready and filled up. I'm not going to give you it. You get your own. I'm going to share Jesus and I'm going to share the word. But when it comes down to truly being saved, when it comes down to really running after God, you're responsible for it. You have to be ready for the bridegroom when he comes. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the virgins came, also saying, Lord, open up to us. Now listen to what he says to them. But he answered and said, Surely I say to you, I do not know you. I told you if you don't know the word, you don't know God. You don't know him. And he's saying to you, I don't know you. He is crying out to you, spend time with me. Get to know my word. And I'm going to tell you a wonderful, wonderful thing about the Lord. I know many of you are like, I don't understand it when I read it. Okay? There is a remedy for that. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you the word. And that will be fulfilled for you because he's here to teach you his word. All you have to do is say, Holy Spirit, I don't, I don't understand. Teach me the word, and it will open up to you. Because he's your teacher. That's what the word says. He's your teacher. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. You would have, he said, even go so far to say you would have, no, you have no need of a man to teach you. The Holy Spirit's your teacher. Ask the teacher. And he'll open it up to you. But it ain't going to happen if you don't open up the word. Watch therefore, you, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. You know what? We have sat here in this service and the Holy Spirit has fallen. And His presence was really sweet. And many of you have not recognized it. You're talking and you're visiting loudly. And it's very grievous. Because the presence of our Lord Jesus walked in the room and you didn't recognize him. That hurts. Where's your reverence for God? You should be looking for him. I'm telling you, I'm talking about services when his presence was strong. Learn to recognize the Lord. He loves you so. He loves you so. I'm just going to read what I felt I wrote that I felt like the Lord was saying. Once again, I'm going to say what I said earlier. Can you lose your salvation? No, you don't lose it. You left it. And defiled your garments that I made righteous with my blood. I made you. I made you righteous with my blood. You ran after the world and defiled yourself. You've cheated on me, your bridegroom. 
hear the cry of Jesus saying, Repent! 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 Now, word from the Lord is the only thing to cleanse your garments is my blood. Learn from me. Stay in my word and under my blood, for it is life to you. Heed my words and my warning. Repent quickly. I will help you. I will help you. He's here to help you. I know this is a hard word, but it's necessary. And um, when Eugene told me I was going to be preaching again, and I got before the Lord, and he began to lay this out and start sending me to certain things to read in scriptures, all I could do was cry. Actually, for a month. Those of you who know me, I don't cry. I'm not an emotional woman. I don't get all soppy and sappy. But I've been grieved for a month in my spirit and just wanted to cry. And all I wanted was more and more and more of my Lord. And I wanted to see his people get set free. And wanted to see him get on fire for the Lord. To run after him. Because I'm telling you, me and my prayer team have labored for hours in prayer for y'all. We have. And I have to trust the Lord. That he's faithful and he's true. And he's going to help you, just like he said. But please, don't sit here and not repent today. We're fixing to take communion. So let's cleanse our garments before we take communion today. You want to pray? One of the things, and Sadie said she's prepared for a month to bring this forth. And, and those of you here last week with us, you know, I told you, you've got to establish your heart. And after you establish your heart, you settle permanently that, that God is for you. And, and then you have to come to that place where you embrace humility, where you've got to be willing to humble yourself before the Lord. And, and he says that as we repent, that brings about times of refreshing. But as we left here Sunday, David Barton called and, and that evening and he said, hey, I need to come by and talk to you and say to you a minute. And he came by that evening and the same Sunday when we're pouring out our hearts before you and telling you you've got to turn to Jesus, that He's the only way. There was a pastor in, up north and had 10,000 members sitting before him. And he told those 10,000 people that it is insanity to believe that Jesus is the only way. That Jesus Himself didn't even believe that or teach that. Well, that tells me that a man is a false prophet that he never has even read John chapter 14. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man, no one comes to the Father but by me. And so there's a theology that's going out that Jesus isn't the only way. There's a statistic that there was thousands of Christians that were interviewed and they said, do you believe that Jesus is the only way? 70% of the church that was interviewed said, no, we believe there's other ways to get to God than through Jesus. 46% of the church that was interviewed believed that Jesus sinned. These are, are crazy statistics, y'all. And so that tells us that the church has not been taught. And it's something that's very grievous to us. When we pour everything that we've got, praying for you, studying, and bringing forth what we believe that God's told us to, and then we hear these things are going out and around in our nation. It's very grievous. And so the church has got to, to awaken. The church has got to rise up. And, and we've got to be taught what God's Word says. And that's what Sadie's been showing you, exactly what, what God is saying. Because just like when she gets to the church of Laodicea, they think that they're, they, they're all this. And he says that you're poor, you're, much, you're wretched, you're blind. And, and the church doesn't even know it. So we're in a place that we've got to come to that place of repentance. So those times of refreshing can, can come. So Father, we stand before you. And we acknowledge that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, we acknowledge that there is no other way. Jesus in him crucified is it, period. And Father, we'll never teach anything else except Christ and Him crucified. Father, the Apostle Paul says, forgetting everything else, all I want to know is about Christ and Him crucified. And so, Father, I ask you to burn that within each and every one of us. 
Father, we renounce that complacency. Father, we renounce the com compromise that has gone on in our lives. That, Father, we begin to mirror the world. And so, Father, we stand before you and we repent as leadership. Father, we repent for being more afraid of man than we're, we have reverence towards you. And so, Father, we, we make that commitment, Father, that we will preach Jesus and Him crucified. And so, Father, now as your sons and daughters sit here before you, Father, they repent for allowing the compromise to slip in. Allowing, Father, that lack of commitment to dwell within us. Father, for allowing that complacency that we don't seek first, you and your kingdom. So, Father, we ask you to come and perform a reconstructive miracle within each and every one of us. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, begin to burn within us that hunger and that desire to seek after you. Stir up within us, Father, that hunger. Father, you said there would be rivers of living water flowing out of our belly. So, Father, stir up that river of living water within each and every person here today and each and every person listening. Father, stir that up within us. Father, as we come to take communion this morning, we are acknowledging, Father, we are acknowledging that your physical body was given and broken for us. Father, we are acknowledging that your blood was shed to cover all of our sins, past, present, and future. They're under the blood of Jesus. But Father Jesus himself to those, said to those who received him, to them he gave the right to become sons and daughters. Father, we want to become sons and daughters. We want to walk in that fullness. So Lord Jesus, come and move within each and every one of us. Holy Spirit, come and begin to deal with each one of us individually. Come and perform that re reconstructive miracle within us. Spirit, soul, and body. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now if I get you all to stand, Sadie's going to lead you a prayer to repent yourself. And then I want you to begin to make your way down for the communion tray. Sadie, go ahead. Yeah. I say, Father. Father. I recognize some of these things in myself. I recognize some of these things in myself. I choose this day to repent. I choose this day to repent. Thank you, Lord, you grant me repentance. Thank you, Lord, you grant me repentance. For this is the goodness of God. For this is the goodness of God. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Give me the strength to walk away. Give me the strength to walk away. Of the sin that so easily besets me. The sin that so easily besets me. Even if that means walking away from friends. Yeah. I just uh, I apply the blood of Jesus. Over myself, over myself to cleanse my garments. To cleanse my garments. For behold, behold, you do make all things new. Make me new today, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for watching CMTV. We hope you enjoyed this week's message. If you would like to give a love offering or partner with us financially, visit cmjacksboro.com/give. Thanks again for watching and welcome home.